So you are just welcome today to our seminars, um, one of the other Sion seminars today. Um, so today's speaker will be Maletsati Muapi. Now Maletsati was a Sion intern in, I think it was 2018, um, at the Sion Arid Lands Node in Kimberley. And during that time, I was also doing my postdoc. And Maletsati came to us. She only had an honors back then, um, and she was a very enthusiastic student, very good um, attitude and very enthusiastic. Um, and then I, she started working with me on my project, which was dealing with the ephemeral pans in the Northern Cape. And during her internship, she did a short, very small project on just studying the distribution of the soil texture in the Northern Cape pans. And she, did a little poster and presented that at the National Wetlands in Darbar in 2018. And at that, during that poster presentation, uh, she was recognized and she was offered an, a master's actually by Prof. Corny van Heistien, um at the University of the Free State. And she actually, yeah, she, she took up that opportunity and she's one of those students where I haven't seen a student work that hard before um, in a very long time. She works very, very hard. So she started her master's in 2019 and then COVID happened um, when she was in the thick of her, of her lab work. You can see that there's a picture of her working very hard in the lab at the University of the Free State. Um, Maletsati went and did over 616 soil samples that she had to analyze. So unfortunately, sorry for that Maletsati, we did gave her, we gave her a lot of work to do, but she really outshone herself um, and she worked very, very hard in the lab. I'm not going to give too much information about what she did. She will, that's her job now after this. But um, she did a very good job. She worked very, very hard. And um, at the beginning of this year, we found out that she actually got her master's. So congratulations, Maletsati. Um, and without any further ado, I'm going to give over to her so that she can actually tell you guys um, more about her, her study. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for the introduction, Becky. Uh, my presentation is titled Soil and Geomorphological Characterization of Selected Pens in the uh, Northern Cape Province. This project was supervised by Professor Gordon van Houston and Dr. Betty Malmo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just having a little bit, okay, all right. South Africa is classified as a water scarce country with an uneven distribution of rainfall that increases eastwards. Therefore, the Northern Cape province experiences airy to semi airy climatic conditions, which includes low rainfall, high temperatures, high evaporation rate, and limited flora and fauna compensation. This consequently influences the distribution and the flow of inland water systems in the Northern Cape province. The inland water systems consist of perennial and non-perennial water bodies. The perennial water bodies refers to systems that flows continuously throughout the year, such as rivers and streams, while the non-perennial water bodies refers to systems that flows or have a presence of water only after an episode of rainfall, such as wetlands and depressions. According to the National Water Act number 38 of 1998, South Africa described wetlands as a transitional land between terrestrial and aquatic systems where a groundwater table is usually located at or near the surface, or a land that, that is periodically covered with shallow water in which under normal circumstances, it will support the vegetation that is typically adapted to life in saturated soils. Therefore, due to the aridity and the geomorphological characterization in the Northern Cape, uh, the wetland type that is mainly dominated are ephemeral pens. The ephemeral pens are referred to as the shallow water systems and they are depressions and they have an inflow of water rather than an outflow of water and they are mainly saturated after a heavy episode of rainfall. 
most of these plants are associated with arid land conditions and they normally lose their water through high evaporation or transpiration and a groundwater recharge. They also uh, perform extremely good benefits such as creating a habitat for aquatic species such as hydrophytes and other aquatic faunas. And they also accumulate finer materials such as salt, clay and nutrients from the surrounding areas that has been washed and uh, collected into these basins. Pens have different soil composition due to their environmental uh, properties of the surrounding area and the saturation level. Therefore, in an area that is well vegetated and in an anaerobic conditions, we tend to experience a high accumulation of organic matter due to a slow decomposition rate, resulting into dark soils such as the organic oil or the peats. And in areas where there is a limited vegetation, we would find a low chroma or a bleached soil resulting from alleviation of finer material where clay would move from upper horizons to down uh, horizons in a profile resulting into an E horizon. So as uh, season changes, uh, the surface crust experiences the swelling and the shrinking of uh, the clay minerals. And that's where we find our vertex soils whereby the surface crust would be cracking and would see uh, figure 5C where water would now infiltrate and there would be spaces for aeration. As air or oxygen is reintroduced back into the soil, we normally experience redox morphology. That's where we would find the presence of, of our higher uh, chroma matrix, such as the uh, red apidal, yellow apidal, or the pink figs. There is a lack of knowledge in regards to the importance of pens in relation to their biodiversity. And this limited research is mainly because the pens are found in remote areas where there is a, a very difficult accessibility. And although they perform such crucial uh, services such as, such as flood controlling and retaining nutrients, they are also threatened. Their existence is also threatened by human activities such as overmining, uh, climate change and urbanization. However, it is very important to preserve and conserve these ephemeral pens for the future generation because they provide so much uh, services for every area such as the Northern Cape province. In this presentation, uh, objectives that were addressed include the description of environmental context of the selected pens in all the four geomorphological provinces, including Kalahari, Bushmanland, Gaplachu, and Apatagu. We also determined the soil chemical and physical properties in both the crust and the soil layers of these selected pens. The study area was located in the Northern Cape province and 98 pens were studied in four study regions, including the Galahari, the Bushman land, Gaplachu, and Apakazun. A total of 616 soil samples uh, was collected from both the grass and the soil of these pens. And using GIS, we were able to describe the environmental factors, including climate, topography, vegetation, and wetland types, and parent material. Also, chemical properties that were analyzed include, P, include pH, electrical conductivity, cation exchange, plant available phosphorus, free iron, and manganese oxide. And also, the physical properties that were determined was the particle distribution size. The table presented was extracted from the environmental factors maps that were generated using GIS. This is a summary of all the information or the dominant and similarities information that we received from the environmental factors maps. Similarities across uh, the geomorphological provinces were observed in wetland types, geology, and topography. The dominant wetland type across all geomorphological provinces was observed to be the depression. However, there was also a presence of uh, flood valleys and channeled and unchanneled valleys in all other uh, geomorphological provinces. All provinces had a common parent material that un underlined them, and it was a pebbly and con calcareous conglomerate mudstone 
that also dominated the Kalahari Shemofit provinces. However, Bushmanland, Gaplachu, and Upper Kavu were dominated by silt, dolomite, and shale, respectively. The angle of slope for all the geological provinces ranged from zero to six degrees, resulting into a very flat slope. However, the Bushman land and Apakazu, which observed to have other slopes that range, range from three to six degrees. All regions had a linear curvature except for the Apakazu region. Soil properties in the pans were shown uh, that they showed that a high pH level that is above 6.5 was observed in all geomorphological provinces, indicating that the soils in all pans had an alkaline soil. An alkaline soil results uh, from accumulation of basic cations. In electrical conductivity, all uh, provinces had a high electrical conductivity except for Gaplet Shu. This may have resulted from the inherent current material and also an accumulation of salt in other provinces. However, a low uh, electrical conductivity can result due to high rainfall that can be able to list out the elements from the soil. Majority of the pens in all the regions had a CC of clay that was below 10, and this indicates that they are kaolinite clay. The kaolinite clay soils have a very low reactive. Uh, they are very low reactive, and the basics are also have a low activity. Phosphorus was really high in Gapla Chu, uh, rather than in all other geomorphological provinces. And this may have been due to the fact that Gapla Chu had an ideal pH, whereby phosphorus is fixed at a pH that is above seven and below four. But Gapla Chu had an ideal pH that was between six and 6.5. Both iron and manganese were higher in Gaplet Shu rather than in all other geomorphic provinces, both in the soil and the crust. This may have been due to the fact that Gaplet Shu had the highest sand fraction as compared to all other areas. Because so iron and manganese are present or mostly present in soils that are well aerated, such as the sand soils. It was also observed that the Galahari and the Bushman land were thought to have high clay content as compared to all other regions. And Apakuju had similar fractions of silt, sand, and clay uh, in both the crust and the soil. From the study, we observed that uh, there is a difference in both the crust and the soil due to the inherent parent material, or because in the crust, the soil properties are mainly defined by the environmental uh, factors that influences all the finer material that's been washed into the pens. And also the soil properties and environmental factors, they can also be used to distinguish the pens between, uh, within and between the geomorphological provinces. The Bushman land and the Kalahari geomorphic province showed similarities in both the soil and environmental properties, whereby they both had high clay content and they both had low phosphorus and iron manganese. Gaplachu was the geomorphic province that showed significant difference as compared to all other provinces in terms of both the environmental factors and the soil properties. This may have been due to the elevation and also the pattern material, which is very distinct from all other geomorphic provinces. However, the upper Kavu geomorphic province had average ranges of properties which showed similarities compared to the other regions. And it also had fair and average ranges in the soil properties that can also be correlated to other uh, geomorphic provinces. So the results observed from these studies can also be used to identify and distinguish pens in the Northern Cape and also in all other provinces because the soil properties that were studied at, in this project can be used as a baseline or the primary soil properties to identify or classify ephemeral pens. The future research should include soil properties such as nitrogen, organic matter, and hydraulic conductivity to fully understand and explain the composition of soil properties in the ephemeral pens and also in the northern Cape. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Malik Sassi. Um, 
I'm going to open the floor now to questions. If anybody has a question, please go ahead. Or let me just see if there's a hand up or anything. Any questions? Everyone is quiet. Hi, I'll ask one. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Thanks for a great talk. Um, I was wondering, is it known how some of these differences in substrates uh, impact the, the fauna that might be in the pans? Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure about the fauna composition in all the pens. My project was mainly focusing on the soil properties. I think that will have to be in the future research if they want to study the ecology and the uh, like botany studies on the uh, ephemeral pens. So I'm going to answer that question on behalf of Malatati because that's basically where Malatati comes in. Um, so my work that I've done on the on the pens are mostly on the faunal. Um, elements, the branchiopods, those uh, specialized crustaceans that live in these ephemeral ponds or fans. And we actually, Maletsasi's work is now going to be crucial for us to correlate um, species distribution because we, we know there's been suggestions that, that geochemistry and soil properties play a major role in the distribution patterns of these um, shrimps because um, they're very, very sensitive to environmental conditions, especially things like pH as well as soil chemistry. Um, so this, this will be the next phase of the project is now to take all of Maletsasi's data and then correlate it with my species data and then to see how this actually affects the distribution patterns of these um, branchiopods. Does that answer your question, Julia? Sorry, I was looking for my unmute button. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, no, that's what I was interested in. That was sort of, yeah, how much is this going to drive different, like, they seem to be quite diff different um, properties in the different pants. Uh, yes, also, uh, Betty, just to add on that, from the presentation, we saw that with different soil properties, we can have uh, different uh, vegetation types. So I think uh, with bio, uh, the branchial studies that Betty will be conducting, and how the soil properties can influence their distribution and occurrence that can also be applied on the vegetation side. Yes, absolutely. Not a lot has been done on the vegetation. So that's definitely still a gap. Um, there's been some studies done and a lot of the fans are primarily bare, but this is definitely going to also help to understand the, the vegetation. Okay, any other questions? I'll ask uh, another one. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks, Manitati. Um, I was also just thinking about the, like the implications as well could be for groundwater recharge for the ones, uh, you know, based on the different sand and clay compositions um, underneath. And like usually we say, okay, if there's a lot of clay, maybe it doesn't penetrate, but if the clay really cracks, in the dry season then then in that first rain quite a lot can go down through and i was wondering if you saw sort of was there a level of amount of clay where it's really very cracked in the dry season versus sort of a medium amount of clay where it's not so cracked um it would be interesting like, i think your results will have so many different applications and one of them can be looking at how we think it does or doesn't yeah. recharge yeah. the groundwater Yes, I totally agree with you because I was also thinking that uh, studies on the hydropedology as to see how the water actually flows and how groundwater recharge uh, influences the presence of, uh, of ephemeral pens and their saturation rate can also explain on like the hydro period of ephemeral pens. So I also agree with you that uh, groundwater tables can also tell a lot about the ephemeral pens. Well, let's see how about a PhD? 
No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole new study that's opened up already that you can investigate, but I do believe that you perhaps need a rest as well. So, um, awesome. Okay, anyone else? I know this is a little bit different. Um, I mean, so this is also very, uh, my left side seeds project was very uh, much uh, focusing on soil science. So it's a very much a, a specialized soil science um, direction that she went into. Um, but yeah, I, I think her work is absolutely crucial to a lot of other questions that need to be answered. And it's the, her data set is now also going to be we'll be able to use her data set for, for future, definitely for different types of future um, research as well. And we have, um, I've already um, supplied her data set to, AL, to um, Helga at the Arid Lands node. So that data set is available. I'm not sure, um, Vainant, I see you are here. Um, I'm not sure how you guys are going to work with a data set. Have you already um, set it up or how does it work to make her data set available? Um, for now, I've only screened it and uploaded it to our server. Um, but the idea would be eventually to um, make all our data available. Um, we are starting with the long-term research projects before we go into these sort of once-off student projects. But eventually, I think the idea is to have all of it available um, to people outside of Zoom. Okay, thanks, Vainand. Is there any other questions? Any feedback? Okay, if there's no other further questions, um, I just want to thank you guys so much. First of all, thank you, Malet Sassi, for presenting your work. Um, and then also thank you, um, Caitlin, for hosting or at least being the person at the back in the background for um, facilitating the seminar. And I'm just going to advertise for next the next seminar. Um, let me just get there. So the next seminar will be on the 6th of May. Let me just see, there we go. On the 6th of May, and it will be presented by Hayden Wilson from the Uwazi Node. So his project or his presentation will be um, about their progress on the SMACRI operational information management system. It's, um, it's basically to see what lessons they've learned from developing mobile data systems for the collection of scientific and operational information. So hope to see everyone there and thank you once again for today for participating, especially Julia. <laughs> Thanks for all those questions um, and thank you everyone else. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and then yes, enjoy the rest of your day.